So this is my design presentation on Louise Philly. Louise Philly works to inspire designers and enjoys empowering young female graphic designers through her story of becoming a successful graphic designer herself. Her work is all centered around typography and more old-fashioned Italian calligraphy. Although this is her typical style, she also branches out and does a variety of unique works for big businesses and small businesses as well as created many book covers and her own books as well. So about Louise Philly. She is an Italian American born in Orange, New Jersey in 1951. Her parents are both Italian and she had visited her hometown in Italy during her teens and it sparked her love for European Art Deco style. She attended Skidmore College and got her Bachelor of Science in Studio Art, which is where she founded her love for graphic design, and then she worked as an art director creating book covers for Random House at Pantheon. Growing up, Louise always had an interest in design. She would carve letter forms into her walls, as well as create illuminated manuscripts of Bob Dylan lyrics, and she started to work with calligraphy early in her teens with just speedball pens and stuff like that. And she had designed nearly 2,000 books during her stay at Pantheon. So let's get into that. So her beginning with the book covers was working at Pantheon. And this is an example of one of her most notable and popular book cover designs there. This book was entitled The Lover by Marguerite Duras. And it demonstrates her style quite well. She had her style centralized around being classic, timeless, and elegant, and she was heavily inspired by Italy, leaving behind standard fonts for her book covers using signature typography that created a classic and unique style for her. She also preferred to have matte laminated book covers rather than shiny finishes, and it differed from the preferences and styles of her colleagues, allowing her work to really speak for itself. So, she had created her own business, Louise Philly LTD, and it was focused on food-related design. She claims that her three main interests are food, type, and all things graphic design. So this uh, design created for the cafe, restaurant, and inn called the Bedford Post kind of represents her style a little bit. A very symmetrical, balanced design, as well as it has a lot of variety, typography mixed with the illustration. Um, she was given a low quality image of the owner's grandfather and transformed it into this stamp design. The logo exhibits a feeling of being welcome and comfortable, but also just the stamp is a timeless type of design that she incorporated into it. And this is another design she had created for a smaller business, the Mermaid Inn and Mermaid Oyster Bar logo. This design incorporates typ typography into her illustration and uses symmetrical balance as well, similarly to the other design. It's simple yet effective in standing out as a logo, and the black and white is another classic color scheme that she uses to illustrate her style, and the mermaids are illustrated in a more abstract and old-fashioned way. This is another small business food-related design she created. Again, symmetrical balance. You can see a lot of pattern and the way she incorporates typography, how it's a centerpiece in a lot of her work. Um, and also, not only that, but there's closure at the very bottom center of the triangle with the ice cream illustration. This design was inspired by a collection of wrapping papers for Italian pests. I don't know how to say this word, but I think it's a pastiserias from the 1930s and again you can see where her inspiration from the Italian style is. She uses a more bright color scheme than she usually does to represent this business well. But 
She said that she prefers working with small businesses over big businesses to create designs like this. So this is a couple examples of, again, food related designs. So the late July crackers logo and the Bella Cucina food products logo. Her design for late July crackers, again, pulls heavy inspiration from Italian and French ephemera, sticking to more old fashioned color schemes and balancing both illustration and type to pull together the style of food packaging she's going to achieve. She went for a more artisanal style for the Bella Cucina food products logo. And again, you can see a lot of symmetrical balance with the Bella Cucina and line and the illustration as well as line in the type as well. These are just a couple other works from her. So this is a label design for Bonnie's Jams on the left and the Pearl Oyster Bar logo she had created for a local business in New York. On the right, she used inspiration from 1930s sign paintings to create the one on the right. And I wanted to include one of her books. Ooh, that is not a good image. I will pull up a better image. But um, this is one of the books she had written by herself, Elegantissima. This work presents a part of the history of graphic design, incorporating much of her career in design. It also uses a lot of her designs from books, restaurants, and food packaging, and contains case studies centered around questions involving graphic design. It's very informative. And then here are all my sources. Altogether, Louise Philly has set out to inspire young graphic designers all over the world, and her works, especially with her typography, have changed the game when it comes to how we illustrate our designs. So. Thank you for listening.